his last game with the Marvel license. Uh, Marvel's Avengers was a live service game that didn't fare well, um, partially because of the live service side of things, partially because the character likenesses didn't, and personalities didn't quite mesh with what people's expectations were from the movies, among a variety of other factors. So last year, and by last year I mean as of this recording, 2021, uh, they put out a different video game using some of Marvel's characters, the Guardians of the Galaxy, which focuses on the spacefaring, spacefaring team of heroes, and I would say it pulls off the concept much better. Guardians of the Galaxy, as with Marvel's Avengers, puts the story separate from the MCU, but while borrowing some core concepts from the MCU versions of the characters. As with the MCU, the Guardians are made up of Peter Star-Lord Quill, Gamora, Drax the Destroyer, Rocket Raccoon, and Groot. And as with this lineup, Drax is not a resurrected human as he is in the 616, but instead an alien whose world was attacked by Thanos, the Mad Titan. The game picks up after a massive war with Thanos and the Chitauri versus the rest of the world, um, led ultimately by Richard Rider and the Nova Corps, um, has wrapped up with the Guardians having been part of Richard Rider's and Nova's um, resistance movement. While trying to obtain a space whale to sell to the monster collector Lady Hellbender, the team accidentally releases a mysterious force from what turns out to be the Soul Stone. It's not really much of a spoiler. When you immediately see it, you go, oh, that's probably an Infinity Stone. And that force turns out to be the Magus, um, a malign and generally malevolent and megalomaniacal personality, which is, if you're familiar with Marvel Comics, the dark side of the personality of the mysterious near-godlike hero Adam Warlock, and with, in turn, the Universal Church of Truth taking advantage of that power to brainwash the galaxy, it ultimately ends up becoming the, the job of the Guardians to stop the Universal Church and their leader, Grand Unifier Raker, from succeeding where Thanos has failed. Guardians of the Galaxy puts you exclusively in direct control of Star-Lord. You can zip around the battlefield, zap enemies with your ray guns, and, more importantly, help direct the other members of your team on when to use their special abilities and on who and with what ones in order to get the best effect out of it. As the game goes on and you build up your XP or uh, points uh, by pulling off large combos in combat, a la character action games like Devil May Cry, you'll be able to unlock additional powers for each guardian, with the fourth power for each character coming at certain story points in the game. With a little time and practice, I found myself able to rip through some points of enemies with ease, though others are more challenging than that than the standard ones. This isn't to say the game isn't difficult. It, honestly, it's balanced fairly well. I've experienced a few deaths, most of which I was able to bounce back from once I figured out what I was doing wrong and adjusted my tactics accordingly. Helping you along the way has various gadget upgrades that can be obtained for art for Star-Lord um, at crafting benches using various materials that you pick up over the course of the levels. There's only like two different types of currency, so it's not too, doesn't get too confusing. And all of these give additional abilities of a moderate level of complexity that help you with making your way through the game. Stuff like getting additional help from beating enemies with melee attacks or other ways to build up enemy stagger meters or even just helping you spot more crafting materials in the environment so you can level up faster, that sort of thing. I didn't have a problem with obtaining all the upgrades. I found all of them by the end of the game and that was even without getting around to crafting that aforementioned help you find crafting materials upgrade until almost the middle of the game, maybe like two thirds of the way in. The game also has a really neat mechanic where Star-Lord can call all the guardians together for a huddle with the player having to choose a dialogue option based on a list of choices to find the right thing to boost up what the, boost up the rest of the team and get them motivated to fight. The list being determined by what the Guardians say as they go into the huddle. Picking the right option will give the whole party as in its entirety a health and damage upgrade for a limited time, which can 
turn the tide of a more intense battle, while the wrong option just gives a buff to Star-Lord, but otherwise still gives a full heal and a shield recharge to your party members along with a revive. There is an option in the game to automatically pick the best option for you uh, without otherwise decreasing the difficulty if you're not great at reading what the other guardians need to hear. There is some humor potential for picking the wrong options, but that might be something to go for as far as like a deliberate thing on the new game plus. Now where this all gets to the lockies with wonky with some of the degrees of level traversal. While the level design is generally intuitive and things are normally fairly linear, I did encounter more of a couple on a couple of occasions where I needed a party member to bash open a wall or slash open a passageway or other similar things, and it took me longer than I'd like to find what needed to be smashed open and where. I can't help but feel like there could have been something done in the game to better signal that to the player than when they were stuck, or as far as when they were stuck, showing where the barrier was and what needed to be done to clear it. Something like a party member saying, hey, there is a thing up there or over here. In fact, specifically, there's something over here um, that might, that would let us pass and possibly even tagging it on your HUD. Something along those lines. Ultimately, I would say that Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy was a tremendously fun game to play and a marked improvement compared to Marvel's Avengers. I do hope that if Square Enix does return to Marvel Universe in some manner or another with the license, I hope that they follow in this game's footsteps and lessen the Avengers live service side. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks. Also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. <laughs>